Thank you. Hi, Pentinio. Hi. Um, okay, so I'm getting better at the not comparing myself to others. I have work to do, but I'm getting better every day. I'm, I'm good with that. What my thing is, is comparing myself to myself. For example, a big thing of me coming here that's been a big motivation for me is I've just had it so in my head. I want to compare myself now to how I was the last time I met you in 2017. Like that was always a thing in my head. And is it useful in helping me to know myself or is it in the same category as me comparing myself to others? Well, is there judgment involved? Sometimes, not always. All right. Well, can you eliminate the judgment part? Working on it. Working on it? So you must not really want it? In no, I don't really want it. <laughs> in I other do. words, you still perceive at least some benefit in judging yourself. What's the benefit in judging yourself? What's the perceived benefit in judging yourself? It, the, when I feel like I judge myself, I feel like I'm helping to clarify. I feel like it's helping to fine tune in a sense. You need to judge yourself to fine tune? I don't need to, but that's what I tell myself when I do it. So, but what's the real perceived benefit? None. If you, none. None? Well, no. the perceived benefit is there. The, the, perceived the actual benefit. benefit might be none. Right. The perceived benefit mm -hmm. is the clarification and the weighing. And well, the... I doubt it. Because you know now that's not the case. You just said no. But that's what I tell myself. So it's no longer your perceived benefit. So what benefit do you still perceive in judging yourself? You got to dig a little because this is unconscious. And this goes for everyone. What's the perceived benefit in judging yourself? What does the subconscious mind believe it can secure, get out of that, and so forth? Preservation. Like Sorry? Preservation. Preservation of right. what? The, me? What's me? I am. Preservation of I am? The preservation. Self it doesn't make sense. Yeah, you're it right. It doesn't, okay. no. I want to sit down. <laughs> no, don't sit down. <laughs> Did you just judge yourself? <laughs> so what was the perceived benefit in doing that right now? The perceived benefit in doing that right now was to... To avoid further... To avoid further weirdness, yeah. Weirdness? Can you be more specific? To avoid further discomfort. Okay. That's getting there. This, what type of discomfort? What do you fear if you're asking a silly question here, for example? Judgment. Oh. So <gasps> you judge yourself to avoid judgment? Go fake. Huh. So you must prefer your own judgment or the feeling thereof over other people judging you? And what does it mean to you when someone else judges you? Or when a group of people judge you? Less than it used to. Um, but what does it mean? What does it mean when a group judges me? Yes. Nothing. Well, then why avoid it by judging yourself? I don't know. Well, figure it out. Okay. <laughs> don't sit down. It's not science, rocket science. What? does it mean to you when someone judges you? In your reasoning, not to you, you, but in your reasoning, in that subconscious train of thought and projections and assumptions, what does it mean to that train of thought? If separation from my truth. When someone judges, like they're... Someone judges you, which means separation from your truth? It, it means that when someone judges, when someone judges me, they're they're implying that I'm off. So they are implying that you're off. What but does it mean? What's it mean to you? Whatever I want it to mean. Yeah. And what have you wanted it to mean so far? 
um, I want it to not mean anything. That's that's why. But what does it mean to you? What does it mean if someone judges you? Nothing. <laughs> then why avoid it by judging yourself? What does it mean? I I don't I don't know. Well, I, dig deeper. What has it meant throughout your life subconsciously? This is why you got to dig a little bit. It's not fully conscious yet. What has it meant to you? What's the significance of other people judging you? What does it mean? What does it imply? Worth, what value, be, worth, value, rightness. It implies worth, value, rightness. Can you say that in a more reasonable sentence? It doesn't imply worth, does it? Because that would be good. People judging you implies worth. People judging me implies lack of worth. Okay. Cool. Who agrees with that perceived consequence of others judging you? Huh? Just a few people. Huh? Half of you were born on a different planet. <laughs> So if other people judging you, to you implies a lack of worth. So you've given your power away, first of all, right? You've given your self-worth away. You've made it dependent on what other people think of you or claim about you. You can see that, right? Because you just stated that. So then what's the perceived benefit in avoiding it? The perceived benefit in avoiding it would be to keep that worth then to not, keep, to to keep not the worth. risk to not risk any of to it. To not risk to lose the worth. Right. Great. So that's why you judge yourself. Even when you know there's no real reason for it and it doesn't really benefit you. But there's a sneaky little assumption that it does benefit you. We don't do anything that we don't perceive as containing benefit. Impossible. So if we say we want reality X, but we continue to execute reality Y, that means reality X has a greater perceived benefit than reality Y. Now, a portion of us might want reality Y. We might realize it, that it benefits us more on some level. But still the attachment to the perceived benefit in reality X is greater. And often this has been my definition of attachment. Attachment is the perceived benefit in reality X is greater than reality Y. Than the perceived benefit in reality Y. It's that simple. What's attachment? The perceived benefit in reality X is greater than my perceived benefit in reality Y. It's that simple. So then you're not really attached. You're just a logical being. Attachment is just a result of a certain kind of logic. Now, it may not be intelligent logic, but it is logical. There's cause and effect based thinking, reasoning. So we feel attached to things only when we have something else that we want from what we have, correct? If we have what we want, we don't feel attached. Does that make sense? It's only if we want something else or there's a threat of that being taken away what we want then we experience what we call attachment. But attachment is nothing but perceived benefit being greater in one thing than in the alternative. So the way to relinquish attachments, one way to relinquish attachments in a gradual path is to understand why you perceive benefit in reality X and deconstruct it until it's dissolved until reality Y just shines in your mind and heart as the only obvious choice that contains all the benefit you desire. And then instantly you don't experience any attachment to reality X. Now this is the theory, of course, in practice, it can be a little, a little longer of a process. But that is 
the foundation of it. So anytime you hear yourself have this dialogue of, I want this, but I don't want this, right? Like I want it, but for some reason I don't have it or I don't want it. Any type of inner conflict like that, inner dialogue that contradicts itself, I call it mixed frequencies, having mixed frequencies, which is very detrimental to your health and to your well-being. So you want to be a unified being. So then typically I, invest, I encourage you to investigate as to what is the benefit you perceive in the thing you know is no longer serving you. And just investigate it. Don't try to let it go. Don't try to force yourself to let it go. You can sometimes, but just investigate what benefit you perceive is still there and deconstruct it until it's like obvious. And one of the ways to deconstruct it is keep asking yourself, okay, and then what? Okay, but I think that this will give me that. Okay, and then what? Well, then this. Okay, and then what? Okay, this, then. Okay, and then, then what? And before you know it, you're like, yeah, I don't want it. Because every time you keep asking, and then what? It ends up into disaster anyway. Impermanence. Thank you. And so that's also a way to relatively gradually increase your maturity for self-realization because self-realization is the result just like anything else getting a house getting money is the result of desire i mean there's other components involved but the core of it is desire will wanting it willing it desiring it right so same with self-realization if you want to recognize the i am for what it really is you have to perceive there to be greater benefit in the recognition of I am as it is than in anything else. And then naturally. And so naturally suffering is our great teacher, no? Because suffering basically means failure of what we thought perceived benefit, uh, what we thought contained benefit is revealed to not contain that benefit or to come with a whole lot of things that counteract the benefit, that make the benefit not worth it. And then we mature. Now, if we mature somehow magically by virtue of inner maturity, by virtue of purity of intent, then we can avoid a whole lot of suffering even though that's not our intention, but we will avoid a whole lot of suffering because we're course correcting ourselves. Wisdom, the wisdom to recognize the transient from the timeless or the finite from the infinite or that which will end anyway and that which never ends. And over time, suffering, suffering, inquiring, inquiring, we more and more want what that gravitational pull already wants for us. And we stop misinterpreting that gravitational pull in the form of, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. I want. Those are all misinterpretations, misprojections of what's already wanted on our behalf. And wisdom, maturity is the ability to surrender to that, to want what God already wants for itself, which is what you are. So, how does judging yourself benefit you? Do you still want it? I do not. Why? It's of no benefit. Because it's, it's of no benefit? Sorry? Because it's of no benefit? Because it's of no benefit. And that's clear to you? It is. Good. Thank you. All right. So, no need to judge yourself. No need. So, next time the habit arises, you'll very quickly catch it and you're like, no. Oh. Anything that you have seen through as being nonsensical, you can no longer believe and invest in. It's very simple. You always go in a direction that you believe contains benefit. Always. You cannot believe in something you don't believe in. Right? <laughs> How do you believe in something you don't believe in? You can't. So if something, another way of saying that, if something stops making sense to you, 
it might still arise. The manifestation of it might arise. The temptation of it might arise. The suggestion of it might arise. The thought or habit about it might arise. But once you've seen through it's the illusion that it makes sense or contains benefit, same thing. It only makes sense if it contains benefit, right? Instinctively, intuitively, something makes sense to us if it contains benefit. So if we see that it no longer contains benefit and never actually did, then we can't believe in it anymore. We can't believe in that suggestion to take that road because we know where it ends up. That's the power of the question. And then what? 